A news anchor from one of the nation's, uh, the country's biggest channels has been working around the clock alongside her former TV competitors to deliver the most up-to-date information on the war. You're looking at recent video from Mariska Padalko's Instagram account. Uh, she joined us now to discuss the news coverage in Ukraine right now. Good morning to you. Thanks for being with us. Uh, good morning. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, it's interesting. Two days, just two days after uh, Russian uh, President Putin invaded Ukraine, all of the four major stations decided to work together. Can you talk about what happened? Yes, there were a few reasons for that. One has been a reason for security because we wanted to keep our broadcasting 24 hours a day and we couldn't because all main stations are located in the capital in Kiev and it was uh, being bombarded by the Russian army. So we had to go to bomb shelters now and then and had to interrupt our broadcasting and we thought that's uh, really bad for the audience. So we decided to first uh, unite all channels uh, so that everybody is uh, responsible for one slot so we can save up our resources as journalists and uh, to set up a backup studio outside of Kiev so uh, we can fill in when another studio in Kiev has to go to a bomb shelter or to a different place. In this way, we uh, don't get interrupted ever. And so far, we haven't been interrupted uh, by whatever reasons uh, for a whole month. Okay. Even when a TV tower in the capital was hit by the missile. Yeah, we remember reporting on that at the very beginning of the invasion, but it's amazing that you've been able to do what you do. You've been on the front lines. What is something that America needs to know about what's going on in Ukraine? I mean, uh, the most... Uh, um, tragic thing that is happening now that uh, we are at the point that we are not afraid uh, to be killed by uh, weapons like by a missile by shelling because uh, to us it seems uh, that it can be um, very quick and maybe not as painful but uh, people are really uh, uh, distraught by the way the Russian army behaves. So the thing that we are more afraid of is like a personal contact with soldiers, how they uh, go to houses, kill civilians or rape women and take all the food uh, and all this stuff. I think this at this point of war, this is uh, the most disgusting thing that is happening. Is that what's happening? Women are being raped and food is being stolen from homes? Yeah, it, actually from this uh, small cities on the outskirts of the capital that now is being freed by the Ukrainian army because unlike uh, the city where people actually in the capital there is no Russian troops and people live in a big high, big story uh, buildings but high rises. outside of Kiev, yes, outside of Kiev they live in private homes like mainly homes in the United States without any uh, big protection. So yes, yeah, so that's what they do. I mean, that's what the reports that we're getting are from those places. That's terrible. How is and unfortunately, we have like very old people who still remember the Second World War, and they said that uh, Nazi German didn't behave that way to civilians. That's a very strong statement uh, and something that has been underreported mm -hmm. or, or lesser reported. How is your yeah. family doing? Uh, my, my husband uh, joined the army the first day of the invasion because he's been going to military training um, for a few months before the invasion because he felt that it was coming. My kids are in Western Ukraine with my grandparents, uh, more or less safe, and I'm with my colleagues. So all our family is now in different places, but comparing to children who are already killed or who have to spend the whole time in a bomb shelter or have no food or no food supplies like in a besieged Mariupol, I think that our family is more or less fine. Of course, I'm all, always worried about my husband because he's not supposed to use his cell, his cell phone for security reasons when he's on a mission. And I'm always worried whether he's safe, whether he's alive. But when I work, I have less... Uh, space for those thoughts. So I'm happy to be working and broadcasting. 
working is keeping some consistency in your life right now. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. And consistency in the life of our viewers, because for them, seeing the anchors they've been seeing for so many years is a part of the normality, you know. Exactly. Yes, I, I think that uh, the U.S. And, and American viewers can definitely relate to that. Marichka Padalko, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.